<laughs> so good morning everybody and welcome to Experimentarium. Welcome to Denmark and welcome to the 30th Excite conference. My name is Sheena Larsen and I am from Experimentarium and I'm very happy to invite our executive director Kim Gladstone Herleff to the stage to deliver the welcoming speech. Kim. I would like to dance with that girl tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Dear friends, welcome to Copenhagen. Welcome to Experimentarium. And welcome to the 30th edition of the Excite Annual Conference. We've been thinking about you. We've been thinking about this very moment, every hour of every day for many months, I tell you. And now you are finally here. Wow. Everybody at Experimentarium, myself included, are looking forward to hosting you. We will do everything we can to make this an unforgettable conference, an unforgettable experience for you all. It is in the DNA of Experimentarium to make science fun and relevant. At Experimentarium, we invite our guests to explore and experiment with science and technology. Experimentarium embraces you with science. Making people curious is part of our mission statement. And we also want to make you curious. We hope that each and every of you will leave Experimentarium having learned something new. Did you notice the theme of this year's conference? That was a nice picture of all the people who worked at, uh, for this conference. And this is the theme, pushing boundaries. We're pushing boundaries right now, in fact. Right here at the official opening of Excite. We not only gathered here at the last stage, but also in the eatery on the first floor, in our interactive film theater, in the lounge, in the yeast cell, and in four different rooms in the cinema on the top floor. Using modern technology, we are all sharing this moment, I hope. <laughs> Believe me, we've taken these two important words very seriously when planning all aspects of this conference. This is not going to be a typical conference. The fundamental idea of this year's theme is creativity and innovation. And creativity and innovation are something that I know we all value deeply as science professionals. There will be many surprises. I hope you will take them all in and embrace them as ins inspiring challenges. Also, the ones that we did not plan for and see them as a chance to exercise your brain. Let me just mention a few of the ways we intend to push boundaries this year. First of all, Excite 2019 takes place in a real life science center and not in a classical conference center. So pre prepare yourself to be embraced by science every day, all day, throughout this conference. And Experimentarium will be all yours. We are close to the public for the first time since 1991 when Experimentarium opened its, its doors. All 26 square meters, 26,000 square meters <laughs> are open for you. So go explore Experimentarium. Our hands-on exhibitions are filled with surprises and experiments. Should you have any questions, just ask. We are all here to help you. We're also pushing boundaries by conducting all sessions 
at Experimentarium. No fewer than 14 parallel sessions will be conducted at the same time, and several of them will take place in unusual spaces, including our double helix staircase, where you saw the choir this morning, in our exhibitions, and even on uh, the outside area uh, in the top of Experimentarium. We're also pushing boundaries by inviting you to dine with us at different places in Experimentarium, not just in the restaurant. And tomorrow, we will serve you a traditional Danish lunch, open sandwiches on rye bread. The world has warmed up for Danish food, but for some of you, it might push a boundary or two. <laughs> when we are pushing boundaries and challenging ourselves, we move out of our comfort zone. There is a chance to succeed. There is a chance that we will fail. There is always a risk. Boundaries on stage, pushing boundaries everywhere. Pushing boundaries, boundaries, pushing boundaries, pushing boundaries. Pushing boundaries Pushing 
Pushing boundaries Yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah Pushing Woo! boundaries Pushing 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 boundaries, pushing boundaries, pushing boundaries, pushing boundaries, pushing pushing boundaries, pushing pushing boundaries, pushing boundaries, pushing boundaries, pushing That was a surprise. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's another way to push boundaries. So, um, okay, back to my my speech. Uh, so, let me see where did it come from. Uh, this is, I think, this is it. Yeah. So, over the next few days, you will have a golden opportunity to gain new insights and be inspired and to meet old friends and expand your network. Do look through our program. It is filled with the best. Let me offer you a few insights. Following this ceremony, we open the Business Bistro. It's located in the big tent, just outside the experimentarium. And tent, I don't know if I, it's more like a building, if you see. It, it's got automatic doors, but it's, we, we rented a tent. <laughs> so go there for the important first coffee break. Then the gala dinner tonight takes place in the Copenhagen landmark, the famous circus building in the very center of Copenhagen. The circus building was once home for elephants, and seals and clowns and is now offering a dinner and an experience. The gala dinner starts at 7. So be there before 7, be seated before 7, the doors close at 7. If you are registered for the gala dinner and you know you're not coming, please give a notice to the reg registration desk in the front hall. The Nocturne on Friday will be here at Experimentarium and it will be a celebration of Excite's 30th anniversary. During this special evening, you will be exposed to a rich program of maritime themed science engagement activities, including music performed by the famous Excite Jazz Band. At nine, we invite you to the grand opening of our rooftop exhibition, The Wave. That's the picture. At 10, during the gala, uh, during the nocturne, at 10, Excite is inviting all attendees to a big and cheerful happy birthday Excite moment in the front hall. And finally, the farewell party will take place at Doggen, and that is a former salt warehouse by the waterfront. A place and a party that you should not miss. Before I end, I would like to thank our generous sponsors. Without them, this conference simply would not has, have been possible at Experimentarium. Thank you to Excite, for choosing us as this year's host and for believing in us and having the courage to try to do all this in a different way. I want to take this opportunity also to thank all the people 
who work at Experimentarium. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your team spirit and for your constant support towards this common goal of hosting the Excite conference. And to all of you who are participating in the 2019 Excite conference, thank you for coming to Copenhagen. Thank you for coming to Experimentarium. Together, we will make it unforgettable. Thank you. So thank you, Kim. Just now, all over Experimentarium, Excite Conference participants are watching the opening ceremony. We have people in the eatery on the first floor, in our interactive film theater, in the exhibition yeast cell at the back on the first floor, in the lounge out here, and in four of the cinemas on the top floor, and in the large stage where I'm speaking from just now. The keynotes tomorrow and on Saturday are the two other moments in the program when we'll be live streaming to different locations around the building. If you want to see the keynote speakers in the flesh on the large stage, you can pick up tickets at our information desk in the front hall from 8.30 each morning. So just now we want to take a few minutes to connect with some of you from one of these locations. My colleague Henrik Helskown is somewhere else just now. So why don't we all wave to Henrik? Maybe he can see us. <laughs> Henrik, where are Hi, you? Hi, Sheena. Can you hear me? How's it going down there? I'm so, up here at the so, area with a lot of lovely people. So just a minute, Henrik. Make, uh, technical yeah, people, we should see Henrik on the screen. Oh, we can see him. We can, we can see a lot of That's him. That's it. Good. <laughs> I actually see a lot of him. Are you there? We can see you now. Hello. Yeah. There? Good. Ready to go? We have prepared this special greetings for you up here at the eatery. Is everybody ready here? Stand up! Come on, guys! Stand up! Everybody stands up! And now, is everybody ready? Can I hear yes? I can't hear you! One, two, three! Push, push, boundaries! Push, push, boundaries! Push, push, boundaries! Last time, push, push, boundaries! How about that, Sheena? Wow, right? Cool, Henry. You do that down there? Yeah, we can join you. Can you do that? Come on, let's do it. Everybody at Experiment Town, let's do it. Okay, let's stand up again. Up again, everybody! We're going to do it all over at the experimentarium. Is everybody standing up? Yeah. yeah. I count. One, two, three. Push, push, boundaries. Push, push, boundaries. Push, push, boundaries. Yes. Push, push, wow. boundaries. Is that good, Tina? <laughs> so what now? So, Henrik, we are really excited and looking forward to the conference. And the theme for this year, as I think you've got by now, is uh, pushing boundaries. Yes. Henrik, when did you last push any boundaries? Well, Sheena, I'm this kind of a guy of classic, normal, uh, convention, conventional, yeah, not pushing boundaries kind of guy. So, I like to stay in my comfort zone, <laughs> I'm in right now. <laughs> yes, but, but <laughs> people here that might not be in the comfort zone. Wait, come over here. Where are you? She's been working all morning. Where do you come from? Hi, uh, Miruna, Romania. She's from Romania. Let's give her applause. <laughs> when did you last push your boundaries within science engagement? Uh, well, actually, it's changing gates at the Munich. Uh, airport. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she has going to change the gates in Munich Airport today. <laughs> Sitting here at Experimentarium. Wow, that's pushing boundaries. You need a hacker? Okay, she got to the entrance. We're going to go over here to some guys, nice guys over here. Are you ready? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Where do you come from? Argentina. There is Argentina. Look at that. This is Argentina. 
Argentina last pushed their boundaries within the science engagement. Oh, all the time. <laughs> all the time? What are you doing right now? Me pushing boundaries? Yeah. Uh, coming here. Coming here. That's good answer. Let's go over here. Are you ready, camera guy? Go over here. I've met some lovely people over here. And how about, you know, uh, science engagement, pushing boundaries, you know, I said I was this, you know, ah, when did you last do it? Just right now, we're talking about taking risks. You're taking risks, and where do you come from? From Canada. You're from Canada. How about you? London. London and Canada is pushing boundaries, taking a risk. Let's give them a ball. Woo! Over here. There's a lot of people here up at the eatery. And Sheena, can you, fall, can you see here? I got this lovely guy sitting here so taking Henry? his wife. Hi. Henry? Two seconds. Are you done with your wife? Wh wh you know I was texting my wife? When did you last push your boundaries? Uh, this morning waking up at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, Henrik? I'm from, oh. I'm from Belgium. He's from Belgium. Yes, Sheena? I thank you for inviting us into the eatery. You're welcome. It's, uh, Come up if you want to join us. We're having a ball, right? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and, Henrik, so it looks all exciting to be here, up there as well. Um, for some, maybe more exciting than for others. Um, <laughs> Thanks for inviting us, and it's great to see the welcoming spirit with everyone connected. So now I invite Herbert Munder, who is the president of Excite and the general manager of the Universum in Bremen. And before Herbert takes the stage, Excite would like you to enjoy the world premiere of a little movie. believe that Exide journey started already three decades ago? It was a time when the European Science Centre's community felt that they need their own platform to share ideas and to learn from each other. This group of giants in our field, I mean our founders, knew that sharing across borders would make them better professionals. Building Excite was an incredible accomplishment. They gave it all their time, energy, financial and human contributions. Looking back, we can only be hugely grateful. Thank you to everyone who has joined us and contributed to our growing professional family over the last years. From two dozen founding members, we grew up to more than 320 EXA members today. Science centers, museums, festivals, universities, research organizations, foundations and companies. Together, we engage more than 40 million citizens with science every year. Through Excite, we have professionalized our field and we created a strong brand for science engagement in Europe. Today, we keep shaping the science and society interface and we keep sharing best practices. As a professional community, we can be proud of our strong network that really acts as a catalyst for innovation in the field. It is really heartwarming to see that the values of our founders are still very much alive at the Excite Network today. The Excite family has a spirit of openness, generosity, inclusion and critical thinking. Newcomers, before they know it, they have made friends in the four corners of Europe. What unites us is our mission to serve the societies where we are living. Science engagement is constantly evolving, based on changes in science and technology, and with the new needs of our European society. Science and technology are the strongest driver 
behind the development of our welfare and health. Our field has a growing role and impact as an important interface between scientific progress, society and its many challenges. We will make sure to keep in mind our European values like democracy, inclusion, respect for the environment and policies based on facts instead of emotions or beliefs. Our Excite community can help us make the most out of many exciting opportunities. A great challenge is lying ahead of us. Dear colleagues, dear friends of Excite, a warm welcome to all of us. Just looking to those old pictures, I think some of us had to shift boundaries now. <laughs> looking to, well, to a picture where they were some years younger. A warm welcome to all of you. I'm happy that you came to Copenhagen to the 30th edition of the Excite Annual Conference and hopefully all of you had a safe trip here. A safe trip to this very special venue. After having the conference in Congress centers during the last years, we are now back in a science center. As you might know, Experimentarium opened its doors for the first time in 1991 and for a second time in 2017, because they renewed their exhibitions. By being inside Experimentarium, you all have a chance to be inspired by these new exhibitions. I hope you will enjoy this special opportunity, hopefully only during the coffee breaks. <laughs> I would also like to welcome the presidents and directors of the partner networks from all around the world, from ESTEC, from RepPop, from ESPEC, SESTEC, and from NAMES. It's a pleasure to welcome all of you here at Copenhagen. But let me start my speech with some latest news. Did you hear that there is a new president in the US? His name, no, sorry, 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 sorry. stop. <laughs> I don't want to be too political. <laughs> but his name is George H. W. Bush. By the way, Ellen Prost is just the new Formula One champion. Did you already listen to the new song of Queen? I want it all. By the way, there is a new James Bond movie called License to Kill. For sure you recognize that these are not the latest news, even though you all started to applaud. <laughs> but what are the news from the year 1989? Some of us, including me, might remember this news quite well, but there was one major event in 1989, which I did not mention, but this event changed Europe, changed the world, and had some very important impact also on the development of our own organization. It happened in 1989, the Iron Curtain came down, the Berlin Wall was teared down, it has been the year of big changes, and of course, this more easy way to travel from one part of Europe to the other one, to have cross-border collaborations, had a big impact also in our organization. In January 1989, 
two dozen science centers met for the founding meeting in Paris and in June, the first edition of our conference took place in The Hague. Some years later, I think it was already here at the Experimentarium, but the first one was in The Hague in the Netherlands. Thanks to the founding members and their personal engagement, the small organization developed rapidly into a much bigger one. It grew up, actually grew in terms of members, in terms of participants of our conference, in terms of importance for the whole field of science engagement in Europe. Today, Excite is the major science engagement community in Europe. Somehow, it is the voice of science engagement in Europe. And there is a clear need for such a strong voice. As you know, the next framework program called Horizon Europe has been discussed during the last year. The European Commission, the European Council and the European Parliament reached a provisional agreement in March this year. And the actual result of that agreement is that there will be no science and society, science in society, science with and for society program anymore. I don't believe it's just depending on the case that they have no idea what kind of words they should use in future. But it's really a sad story that we ended up here, but it's not the end of the story, so we have still to fight and try to influence the politicians on the European level. Because it seems that European politicians don't see the risk which might occur by putting the funds or by cutting the funds for innovation science engagement. If you would have told me this two years ago, I wouldn't believe it. Although this is an actual situation, there are good reasons to keep on fighting for the recognition of the importance of science engagement for Europe, for the democratic systems, for the work you all do day by day. I promise to you that we, the board and the head office in Brussels, will keep on addressing European decision makers. You might read on social media that we have prepared an open letter to Commissioner Moedas, which can be signed during the next days. Up to now, more than 40 different institutions have signed that letter already. Looking back on our own advocating activities during the last year, I really have to thank the board who spent a lot of time and energy for the best of our field. They all support our network in many different ways. Their work is so valuable for our network that I would like to introduce them to you and thank them personally. I will do it by the different structure by the structure of the different committees. Okay, that's me. I have not to thank you. Then I would like to thank Michiel. He is the director from the Nemo Science Museum in Amsterdam. Anna from the Natural Science Museum of Barcelona. Tapio from Heurika in Finland. And of course, Catherine Franch from the, executive, uh, from the team. She is the executive director of Excite. All, you all know her. And then the trustees, Jean-Baptiste from Cité L'Espace, Toulouse, Robert from the Copernicus Science Center, Kim from Expanterium, and Ulrike from Focus Terra, ETH Zurich, Luigi Cité L'Espace, Naples, Italy, Tanazasis from Noises Thessaloniki Science Center, Helen Science Museum Group London, Stefan Technopolis, Belgium, Bruno Universions, Paris, the Norwegian Museum of Science and Technology is represented by Jan Alfred Anderson. And that's, I don't know what Castellas is. <laughs> back, to me. back to me, okay. Okay. So thank you to all of you, to your time you spent, your ideas, your creativity, your innovative uh, contributions. 30 years of Excite are not only a good reason to look back, but should be also be the starting point 
for thinking about the future. We, your deep participants, all live in a fast changing world. The speed and the scale of change makes it difficult to predict the future and to define what will be the best strategy for our organization. But the board has started. This discussion will come back to you to listen to you, to get your ideas. That's nothing you can do within a day, within a conference, so it will take time. But we as a board think that it's now the right moment to evaluate the existing strategy and to start the discussion about our future. Part of this discussion will be, of course, also a major activity, and this is a conference, our annual conference. The board invited the ACPC to discuss the question, does the structure and the concept still fit to the needs and the ideas of the field? Especially during the breakfast with the board, the board will ask this question to you, to the participants, and we will listen and try to understand what are your needs. Even though I might run a little bit out of time, I don't know exactly, but might be, I would like to thank the teams who are responsible for our annual conference. At first, the ACPC, our program committee. Thank you for putting together this brilliant program. You told me that there were a lot of different excellent proposals and it was a hard job to select the best of the best. Thank you to our team in Brussels, dear Catherine and your team. You are doing a great job. You've been so engaged in supporting our network during the whole year that I can't find really worth for that. Thank you for the excellent work you did. Of course, I always like to thank the sponsors of our conference, especially the Kefli Foundation, who is sponsoring and supporting the keynote speech on Friday. Without the support of all of you, a conference like this would not be possible. Then I would like to thank the award jury. I will not tell you the outcome. So there will be an announcement soon. I'm looking very much forward for the results of the Gago Award selection this year. Last but not least, I would like to thank the team who has and is pushing boundaries. Dear Kim. You and your team from Experimentarium, you have pushed so many boundaries. I think one of the most important boundaries I will try to explain now, I learned that the space of this huge science center was not enough. So you put this construction beside it. I don't know whether you mentioned already to the municipality it will be there for the next years. But the most challenging thing here in Copenhagen is that you if you want to have this construction there, you have to close a bike line, lane there. And that's really something in Copenhagen, where everybody is going by bike from A to B. Closing bike line is something like, wow. <laughs> so thank you to you and your team for organizing this conference, that you took the challenge to bring the conference group into this building. Thank you for bringing us all to Copenhagen. Thank you. To all of you, dear participants, colleagues, friends, that you came to Copenhagen. Enjoy your days at the Exit Annual Conference and keep open minded for new ideas, find out new ways for science engagement so that you will go back with fresh ideas, a lot of motivation to do new exciting things at home. And perhaps see you all at the upcoming conferences in the next years. Thank you very much. I've been asked to say that Excite members can get tickets for the breakfast with the board tomorrow morning at the exhibitors and sponsors desk at the registration in the front hall just after the end of the opening ceremony. And this will be on a first come, first served basis. So thank you, Herbert. Thank you, Excite. Thank you, everybody who's a member of Excite. It is a pretty big accomplishment when you think of it. 30 years is quite a while. It's 10 years before you could even Google what Excite is. 
This morning, you might have experienced the flash mob performance by choir in our front hall. The choir is called Tu Diong and is based here in Copenhagen. They're now going to sing two Nordic songs for us. Uh, the, the first song is an old Swedish song about love and is called Ut i Hage, Out in our garden. The second song is Danish and with lyrics by Hans Christian Andersen and is called I Denmark er jeg født. In Denmark I am born. So please join me in welcoming the choir. Oh, 
So thank you to Leon. I now invite Catherine Ponce, the Executive Director of Excite. Catherine. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Come with me. Um, I'm in a cafe. I'm in a cafe trying to be in between. Between the others, between the noise, between my own boundaries, free my thoughts, lose myself for a while. Hello, excuse me, could I have your new formula? This science espresso. Oh, thank you. That was fast. Uh, but it makes me long for a cafe longo with conversations and food for thought. Around me, my cafe, I hear French, Dutch, Danish, Portuguese, Arabic music. I'm in Europe, which is beautiful and challenging diversity, boundaries brushing with one another. The cafe is an old historic building, but with Wi-Fi. Europe, with its layers of history, coexisting with high-tech and blooming creativity. Europe, with its democratic values, not always super well performed by its representatives, but nevertheless shared by the majority of its citizens. Europe with its complex and beautiful project for peace. I'm in this cafe, lively groups around me, chatting, laughing, but each table its own unit, round tables like islands. Here, only the person serving those science expressos speaks to everyone, thinking, I've got a great job discussing science and technology with everybody making connections between the tables, sharing the intuition of one person with the foresight of the other, the practical experience of one with the knowledge of another, but also thinking, if only I didn't have so many clients, if only money wasn't involved, if only the job was better paid, but it's a nonprofit cafe, and if only the cafe had a name. We are difficult to define. Science communication, citizen science, science engagement, public engagement, we don't quite agree. It doesn't help to advocate for our lines of funding. Without a name, it's hard to be in the game. And yet this cafe is so popular and the job is so meaningful and rewarding. It's a peculiar cafe. The tagline reads, here in this cafe, we have no boundaries, but we have limits. We limit our speaking in order to better listen. We limit from buying and we try to exchange. We limit the number of clients to have more time to engage. There's a limit to what we can accept. We don't accept that some humans are better served than others. We oppose selfishness in consuming the resources of the planet. We refuse intolerance and foster openness. We fight ignorance and value knowledge. We reject false statements and claim sincerity. We have made an ethic of our limits. Our cafe is unique, not because we serve good coffee or excellent science expressos, but because there's more to our cafe than coffee. Our cafe is a statement. This is known, proclaimed. That's why people come here. That's how our cafe stands out from all the other coffee places. I'm in the cafe looking for the in-between between the boundaries, between what is and what is yet, yet to be. Hello, can I please have a science in between? Between despair and optimism, between science for growth and technology will kill my job? Between I can't understand what they're talking about and 
No, thank you, I can find my own answers on internet. Between top-down explanations from a pinnacle and bottom-up workshops where we're all lying on the floor, between rationality and emotions between my brain and my menopause. I'm looking for what's between the lines. I'm looking for space. Like everyone, I'm in the middle of categories and definitions. I don't quite fit. No one fits. Nothing fits everyone. No one, not one organization fits and fills all the space. So if no one fills it all, then there is space, no? There is space for change, space for improvement, space for hope. There is space, but there isn't much time. We can act, but we can only act now. I'm still in my cafe, and it's now the end of the day. The light is fading, the sun is low. You know that time in winter when it gets brown? Not white, not black, but brown. Not dark, not bright. When we cannot see very well, when our sight diminishes. Sight is such a dominant sense that often what we don't see doesn't exist. Loss of biodiversity, climate change, injustice. How can we make citizens see without seeing? It's that time of the day when things get blurred, when perfection loses its meaning and only the essential remains. With a friend or a stranger, we don't pretend anymore, we take risks, we open up, we say things we've never said before. In the cafe, Leonard Cohen sings, ring the bells that still can ring, forget your perfect offering, there's a crack, a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. We in science engagement, we own powerful bells and we can make them ring and ring louder. Waiting for pe perfection though, and we might be too late. You, the Excite community, you are the crack, the in-between, the different, the difference. It's through you that light gets in. We're privileged to be gathered here at this conference. And I know that the wonderful team that organized it, the teams actually, Experimentarium, Excite, my team, and the conference program committee, we feel very privileged and proud to have you here because you are tremendously powerful and you can improve the world. You reach so many people in ways that are between the traditional boundaries, in styles that society needs. You simply serve the best fair trade coffee and in the spirit of old European cafes, you lead the best enlightenment cafes. So I wish you a great conference. Make the boundaries of your heart porous. Allow trespassing on your property. Practice brain osmosis. Open the gates to receive floods of friendships. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So now I invite Sharon Amont, who's the chairperson of the jury for the Mariana Gago Excite Awards, to announce this year's winner. Sharon. Great. So, I've got a really good job in Excite. Reading all of the submissions, and there are many, of, from all of the organisations, who um, um, put forward their projects. And it's absolutely astounding um, for us all on the jury. Um, David Harvey, who 
worked um, in, in New York at the um, American M Museum of Natural History, um, sees it as a real honour. You know, we do this across the continents, this um, assessment of the submissions. And he is always blown away. It's really joyful for us to read about all the work. And we always want to give many, many more um, awards than we can possibly do. But keep them all coming in, please. So the Mariano Gago uh, 2019 Excite Awards, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, really, um, it was inspired by this wonderful man, Mariano Gago, who really espouses and espoused all of the values that Katrine was talking about uh, earlier on. Um, and these words here were written um, in commemoration of him after he died. He influenced, of course, um, as a scientist, um, uh, Europe, um, policy, um, in all sorts of ways, but was really fundamental in, in promoting public engagement with science, which is why our awards are um, um, uh, named after him in his honor. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mariano. And um, this is the fourth year. We've been doing this for five years now. And this is the fourth year that the awards have been um, supported by LIP, the Laboratory of Instrumentation of Experimental Physics, which was founded by Jose Mariano Gago in 1986. So we are really grateful for the, for the kind support of, of that organization. There are on the jury all three of us. Um, we span uh, the globe, um, which makes for some interesting coordination issues, I can tell you. Um, Sarah Davis is in Norway, and David is in um, New York, up New York State now. And of course, I'm in London. So we all get together and, as I said, assess these wonderful applications that you have all made. Um, it's, all, it's getting harder which means that you're getting better at writing applications, um, which is good. So keep them coming in. We had two categories this year, um, but in the time-honoured tradition of these long-standing awards, we, of course, decided that we wanted to add another category um, because there was one particular uh, uh, application that really stood out for us uh, and seem to be so important at this moment in time. So we, the jury, took the hand, uh, took our, uh, embraced our own power and decided that we wanted to have a special award, a special which, which recognises the work of this institution. This institution uh, developed a project which really wanted to tackle fake news head on. And having just come from London, where we heard all about fake news firsthand from uh, all sorts of world leaders, um, I can tell you this is absolutely needed. The protests were protests, not, and the streets were empty uh, otherwise. Um, so spreading, so Tackling um, fake news head on is really important. Uh, we really liked the bravery of this organization who, who, um, who used the best media to, to connect with people. It's had 305 million viewers so far. I would like to show you uh, Univers Sciences Data Science versus Fake News, which has received our special award. So, this is a series of films which go from deforestation to vaccines, knocking on the head all of those myths about them. Um, it's had 3.5 million viewers so far. Here's a flavor of that. Rumor has it that the measles vaccine is not indispensable. Is that actually true? 
let's take a look at the numbers. A person with measles can contaminate between 15 to 20 people. It's one of the most contagious infectious diseases in the world. Only a 93 to 95 population vaccination rate can stop the virus spread. Between 2008 and 2012, in France, a vaccination coverage of 85% did not stop a huge measles outbreak that infected 24,000 people and led to 1,500 hospitalizations, 34 complications and 10 deaths. During the first six months of 2018, this was the situation in the European Union. With disease clusters and deaths in France, Italy, Greece, and Romania. During a measles epidemic, between 14 to 21% of infected people are subject to complications resulting in viral or bacterial pneumonia. And there are between 1 and 10 deaths for 10,000 contaminated people. These numbers are to be compared to the vaccine side effects. More than 10% of vaccinated people show a skin reaction. Between 1 and 10% have pain and fever symptoms. One person out of 450,000 is subject to a severe allergy. And to this day, there have been no deaths following the measles vaccine. So, can I... Oh, may I have a huge round of applause for, applause for Univercion, Bruno Maca, the CEO and Chairman of Univercion, and I would like to award you with your certificate. Bruno. Bruno, this is for you. This is for all of the Universiance team. Um, it's been fantastic to read all about your... That's what I like in the morning. A nice kiss. <laughs> Dear friends, I am very honored, we are very mm. honored to receive this special commendation award for our web series, Data Science versus Fake. I would like to address my special thanks to our partners, because they are numerous for their contribution, and to the jury mm. for considering our project as bold and pertinent. This prize is a valuable testimony of the effective work to counteract the rise of misinformation, fake news, or infox, as we say in France. Universiance deals with these issues on a daily basis through its exhibitions and public engagement activities. Such media is a new approach and format offering topics in full adequation with European concerns and global issues. As you said, Sharon, more than 3.5 million viewers in Germany and in France, thanks to our partnership with Arte, which is a German and French TV channel. Very successful. So more than 3.5 million viewers have discovered the web series. This reveals the high degree of interest that sparked in several European countries. It's a pleasure to share it with you now. This information represents serious threats to the exercise of citizenship in our democratic societies. As Shakespeare said, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> but science centers and museums are standing up, ready to act. Let's be brave together. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that's, um, as you can see, you can see why we chose that project for uh, a super special award. Um, and now on to the sustainable success category. Um, so this is all about the long-term impact of a project or an organization, um, a demonstrable impact, um, and this project that we've chosen 
has, has been going uh, since uh, 2017, started in 2017. Um, it's an enormous, it was an enormously, um, uh, the project was able to demonstrate the evidence of the impact that it's had right across this country. Um, and we are extremely pleased to uh, award the, the 2019 Mariano Gago Excite Award for sustainable success to Psycho in Athens, in Greece. So can we give them a round of applause, please? So this this project, STEM Powering uh, Youth, is a, is a is about young people. It's been uh, it, it started in 2017. There are three partners: Psycho, the Vodafone uh, Foundation, and the Hellenic German School. I can't say that in uh, Greek, I'm afraid. Um, the um, it has it, it aims to work in partnership with. Uh, people, organisations, teachers and schools in the remote areas of Greece. It has um, uh, reached 35 of such places, connected with 12,400 students through 180 projects over that time. Truly profound and having a huge impact. Together, there is a really fantastic formula of empowering and engaging um, teachers and young people to connect and to think about their local project and how their local projects can have um, a real science STEM um, ethos and make a difference. So we were extremely pleased uh, to uh, make this award and here's a short film about it. So I would like to uh, invite Theo, Anna, Anna oh, no, I'm sorry, Theo, come on stage, <laughs> tell us how to pronounce your name, I am so sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Shall I wait for the award first? Yeah. <laughs> you can tell, tell everybody your name. <laughs> okay. It's Theo Anagnostopoulos. <laughs> okay. To, you, you can read it on the count of three. You can all try and pronounce okay, it. Okay, okay. Okay. No, you will only try the surname. Okay. One, two, three. Anna. <laughs> it was easy. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for this award. I'm Theo from Greece, so uh, thank you for paying for my conference fee. Um, it's, a, it's a great honor to be here and be um, awarded. Obviously, this is not a work that I was done by myself. Uh, it was done by my team at Psycho, together with the Vodafone Foundation Greece, that Nicole and Rulia are here. And Elno Germanikia, or he, the school, Sophocles and Aliki, and many, many others, and of course the educators and the teenagers. The aim of this program is to empower the teenagers uh, in an extracurricular um, activity to become innovators to give um, solutions to local social problems. Um, as the program was running, we were 
visiting several of these rural areas to see how the kids were doing. And in one of these remote islands in the Aegean, I met little Yanis. Yanis, um, he um, is dyslexic and he also has a de attention deficit disorder. So in the morning normal school classes, he was probably the, the worst performer they, they had. Now, with the same educator in the evening STEM class that they were doing with us, he was the best performer they had. Um, and this shows that, at least in Greece and maybe elsewhere, there's something that needs to be redone about the education system. Um, the idea of all the STEM programs that we're all running in here is not just to uh, shift people to study science and become engineers. All jobs are important and diversity is very important. But in an era where fake news, popular, uh, populism and nationalism are so dominant, it's our duty to empower citizens on how to be able to make their own decisions based on data and facts. This is what the work is about. So on this, thank you very much. There is a So you can see why we gave that award, can't you? It's just getting better. Uh, finally, our final awards is the Beacon of the Year. Oh, the Beacon of the Year Award. Sorry, I just saw the slide preempting it. Um, this this uh, is a new award uh, this year, um, and it goes to an individual nominated by their peers. So that's very important. So. Um, it's the peer recognition of the work that you have done, that somebody has done. Um, and that makes it much more profound and um, extremely, it's extremely um, uh, inspirational to read the words of other people about this individual. Um, I'm just going to go straight into it. The winner is this year, Barbara Stryker. So, Barbara, oh, come on up. I'll tell you about you while you're standing next to me. <laughs> Do come on up and I'll give you an award. Um, so, Barbara um, has, um, is, a, is, a, is really and truly a beacon uh, in our field. In, and it proves that you can achieve great things. You don't have to be loud and boisterous. You can be a quiet, tenacious, dedicated person who just keeps at it and also plays a very interesting instrument. Um, so Barbara um, has been in the field of science communications after f uh, from completing her PhD in molecular biology. There's some lovely pictures of her behind her. Uh, she co-initiated the Australi Austrian Association of Science Centre Networks in 2005. That's Austrian, not Australian. <laughs> she is an active advocate of uh, social inclusion, which runs deep through all of her work uh, um, and is something she's very focused on today at this very conference. Um, so social inclusion and diversity really drives her. And again, she has shown exceptional leadership in this area. She has been and is a very active member of Excite, the Excite Conference Programme Committee since 2015. She was one of the hosts of Excite, if you remember that wonderful Excite we had in Graz in 2016. Um, she's a committee member of the Excite theme, the Facilitators Group, uh, which is all about empowering um, uh, explainers. And she initiated an, av uh, an advocate group for social inclusion, equality and diversity. 
Um, it was a real pleasure to read the great words that people have written about Barbara. And it's a great pleasure to give you the award and to announce you as the first Excite Beacon. I'm going to go and get the award for you now. <laughs> oh. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually had to look up the word beacon. <laughs> then I realized that the beacon I'm supposed to radiate. I light up when I see a visitor making connections between experiencing and understanding. I light up when people connect with one another one another instead of othering each other. I light up when organizations with different rationalities find inspiration in connecting. Doing science in engagement with a social inclusion focus in a network setting, I get a lot of this. But then I wonder if this is enough. If we as a field want to cultivate fact-based critical thinking as a much needed contribution to our democratic society, we need to start in our own organizations. We have to be aware of remnants of the deficit model, of teaching more than listening, and of actually contributing inadvertently to social injustice. I light up when we as a field are courageous enough to question ourselves. And look out for equity at Excite. That's one of the things I'm really proud of that the community is behind this, and you'll find it all over the conference. But being awarded something as a person does not go without giving thanks. So let me first of all thank Margaret Fisher, who initiated me into the science of the world, and she sends her greetings, she can't be here. To my partner, Barbara, who keeps inspiring me over all these years. And then to my team, changing team over the years, wonderfully, who turn ideas into meaningful projects and to all the partners in the Austrian network. To the NOIS leadership program and all fellows who encouraged me to grow and embrace my own introvert leadership style. And to the exit community, and it has been said that it's a family and I truly feel this, where I come to recharge, find support, find challenges, find friendships, and now a recognition that I'm, I'm truly humbled to take on. And thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, fine, uh, so finally, I mean, what a great set of organizations and individuals who make all this work. Finally, I would all urge you, as is my wont, to um, submit applications for next year's awards. Get thinking about what's great in your organisations, thinking about someone you might want to nominate. Um, and, and I hope that we'll be able to celebrate such fantastic projects and people again next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. And thank you, award winners, for lovely insights into your activities. At Experiment Time, we love soap bubbles. So what would an opening be without a soap bubble show? Our soap bubble expert, Martin Agerbeck, is joined by Cecilia Panduro, who is an explainer at Experimentarium. Together, they will take you through a show that combines several performing arts in synergy with nature's own bubbles. To accompany them, we've invited the Tudion Choir back on stage. And I could say this is a real world premiere. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy the science and beauty of soap bubbles. Thank you. We've really been looking forward to come here today and give you a lot of bubbles and tell you a bit about soap bubbles. We all know bubbles so well. Ever since we've been a kid, we have blown a lot of bubbles. And some of us never really stopped. Yeah. 
we relate to them and we feel that we know them. But here on the stage, we feel that we really do not know that much about bubbles. Why are they around? Why do they have colors? And most important of all, how can we make a huge soap bubble? Soap bubbles are an amazing tool for explaining science. You can ask these rather simple questions about something that you know really well and that seems rather simple at the surface. But actually, there's a lot of science in soap bubbles in many different fields. And this is a perfect gateway to dive into natural science. We don't have that much time, so, so let's dive into it. So we have this uh, special table, and we want to put a bubble on it in a minute. I'll just put this here. So first, we have to make it wet, because we all know that when a soap bubble hits something that is dry, this is often a kid's finger, well, then the bubble pops. So we need to have a wet surface. Perfect. And now we're ready to make a bubble on our table. And then the table can put a bit of light. Beautiful. And now we can see all the colors and perfect stage light is dimmed. Wonderful. It's just like looking into a fireplace. You have all these dynamic motions and these beautiful colors. You can look at this for hours. And it's not just something that I say. I, I know you can. <laughs> a soap bubble consists of soap and water. And as time passes by, gravity will pull down the water, so it will get thicker in the bottom and thinner at the top. So actually, all these colors are actually a map of thicknesses in the bubble. And if you follow horizontally, you can follow one color and therefore one thickness. And then it will, of course, change vertically. So right now we have all, all colors. We have the white light. But what happens if we only have one color? So let's try that. So here we have red light. And we can see that at some thicknesses, the red light is in enhanced. It's turned on. We have constructive interference in the soap film. At other thicknesses, the light is off because we have destructive interference in the soap film. So this specific color has different thicknesses that it likes better than other, where it's turned on instead of turned off in other places. So let, let's look at the other colors. So if we change between red and green, we can see that the, the bands of light is in different places. And we can also see that the red bands are broader, wider than the green bands, because the wavelength of the red light is longer than the wavelength of the green light. Beautiful. Let's try with, uh, with different uh, colors as well. So now it changes automatically. Here you can see uh, two colors at a time. And uh, you can see the bands, they are combined. And um, if it then changed back to the white. Oh. So we have, we have these bands from the different colors and they combine into what we see when we have the white light. Beautiful. Yeah. Soap films are amazing for showing fluid dynamics, so flows in water, in air, and so on. And if you blow gently on the, on the bubble, you can see these twirls coming. And actually, there are French scientists that had looked at spontaneous twirls and the eye movement of the, the spontaneous twirl, and they are compared it to hurricanes in the Caribbean Ocean. And they can see that there's a very high similarity between the eye motion in a soap film and the eye motion of a hurricane in the Caribbean Sea. It's amazing that you can use soap bubbles to get wiser on hurricanes and be better at warning people to evacuate if that's necessary. As I said in the beginning, we can look at this for hours. So let's do that. 
No, <laughs> no. We have a conference to go to, so um, so we'll show you something else. First, we will uh, please have the the stage light on again, and then we'll just reorganize the stage, and then we will uh, get back to you. Yeah. Let's go with first. Perfect. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. So uh, what you're about to see is a collaboration that we've been working on for the last uh, couple of weeks, and it's uh, something unique for you guys and girls. So really hope that you uh, enjoy it. We're not going to do it again ever. <laughs> so we are so fortunate to have the wonderful choir with us. So uh, yeah, please enjoy.
Thank you for your time. We hope you make a lot of bubbles out there. Thank you. <laughs> so that was really amazing. And this show evolved over time. And I really think it's a wonderful example of what you do when you work together. We have dancers, we have science explainers, we have science in the bubbles, we have nature's lovely way of making bubbles, and we have the choir singing so beautifully. And when we got this idea, we're like, this is too crazy, but then it just seemed so lovely. So it, we ended up doing it and we hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Martin and Cecilia. Thank you to the on choir. Um, we, no, we now, now declare no. the 2019 Excite Conference for, for open. open. Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. And invite you all to take part in the coffee break in the business bistro. It's just outside of Experiment Time, inside the long white tent. Experimentarium experiment staff are waiting to guide you. Enjoy the coffee break. And push some of your own boundaries in Copenhagen. But not the one about being there at quarter to seven tonight for the gala dinner. <laughs> and, and have, have a, a fantastic, fantastic and inspiring Excite, Excite conference. conference. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs>